Hello and welcome to Restoration Ministries. I'm Pastor Jeff. Today we are going to talk about now is the time. You know, I've been going through some things with work and in our personal lives with ministry uh, that God has consistently been telling Tracy and I that now is the time. Now is the time not to procrastinate, not to delay. There are so many things happening that would be distractions that would take our time and attention away from the things that God is calling us to do that I believe he's calling us now to say now is the time. So today I want to talk about that. I believe it's time that we activate our faith. I believe it's time that we walk by faith and not by sight. I believe that it's time that our hopes become realities and I believe it's a time that we walk in a way that is pleasing unto God. So let's explore this through the scriptures and talk about what we're talking about today, which is now is the time. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 11, and we're gonna read verses one and six. It says this, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Skip down to verse six. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is, that God is, and that he, God, is the rewarder of those who diligently seek him. Now is the time for faith that is tangible yet unseen. And that can be tricky for us because we want to do what we can see. We want to have experience and trust in things that we can tangibly, physically see in our lives. But God's calling us to a higher standard. He's calling us to walk by faith and not by sight. He's calling us to rely and trust on him. So let's explore faith and moving from just talking about it to actually activating it and flowing in it now. Now is the time. So our message is about activating our faith today. And we want to take, what steps can we take to make sure that we're doing that right now in this season? And so I want to go through these three things. First is that we acknowledge that faith is a gift that is available now. Faith is a gift that's available now. Secondly, that we have to receive that gift. You know, you can receive and you can have a package come to your house, but until you open it, until you experience it, you're not getting the advantage of it. And number three, that we need to activate that faith. Not just we acknowledge it's a gift and then receive that gift, but then we have to flow in that gift. So first, acknowledging that faith is a gift that is available now. Our text starts out with saying, now faith. It's talking about right now, in this moment, faith is to be activated. We aren't to wait for it, but it's now. It's a gift that's for right now. We need to uh, walk in a place of faith now, not wait till we get our, our situation handled or, or things get better in our lives, our situations or circumstances align the way we think they need to before we move and act in faith. It's a walk of faith that requires us to say, you know what, God, I trust in you. I believe in you. I have faith in you. And because of that, I'm going to walk in your ways and I'm going to do it when? Now and continually. So our text in Hebrews begins with that and says now faith. But faith is not something for a future that we can just dream about. That's what hope is. Hope is looking forward to the future. Faith is the confidence in the now of what God is wanting to do in our lives. Ephesians 2.8 it says that for by grace you have seen you have been saved through faith and that not of ourselves but it is the gift of God it's our first point that faith is a gift faith is a gift that has been given to us by God faith is by definition having the complete confidence belief and trust in someone I've heard it explained that when you look at the original text in the, in the Greek, the language uh, talking about faith, it really is talking about a title deed, like you would have for your car or your home. It's the paper that says, I own this. So what God is saying to you is it's a gift that he has given unto you, that he provides to you. We all have faith in something. You know, I have a story. We used to have a lot of young men and women who would come to our home. Our place was a bit of the gathering place. We'd many times take those people to church. And one time we had a gentleman come to our house, a young man that says, I don't have faith in anything. And we loaded him in a car and we started driving to church. And I said, you know, as we were traveling, I said, you know, you said you don't have faith in anything. He said, that's right. And I said, well, what do you have uh, belief that I'm where I'm taking you? And we drove out in the country and he goes, well, 
you're gonna take us to church. That's what you said. I said, how do you know that? Do you know the way to the church? He goes, no. And I said, so you have faith that I'm gonna drive you to church. And I slowed down the car as if to stop. And I said, what if I dropped you off right out here in the middle of the country, no houses around in the middle of a cornfield? He goes, you're not gonna do that. I said, because you have faith. You have faith and trust that I'm not gonna do that, even though you have never met me. So I'm not trying to, to convince you of anything else other than your statement isn't right. You have faith in it. You know, you're gonna have faith in something. So if we can have faith in the things that are around us, that are in this world, then why wouldn't we have faith in a loving God who created you in the beginning? Hebrew 12, Hebrews 12.12, 12, let's turn to that. Hebrews 12.12, 12, let's read it. We're talking about faith, and we're talking about it being a gift, first of all. God's turning my pages for me. 12.2, it says this, Looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and as he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This is what we want to establish, that Jesus Christ himself is the author and the finisher of our faith. He created faith. It's a gift that he's able to give because he created it. He invented it. He's the author. He is the author of it. Um, the appropriate place then to place our faith is in Jesus, the author. In other translations, it's called the creator, the founder, or the pioneer. He is the one who invented it. And so therefore he has it as a gift that he can bestow upon you. He's the finisher or the perfecter. He makes the faith that we have in him become perfect. So now is the time. Now is the time to acknowledge that faith has been given unto you as a free gift and a gift from God Almighty. Point number two, we need to what? We've, we've acknowledged it's a gift. Now we need to receive that gift and we need to receive it now. You know, if we get a gift for the holidays and we don't open it, you know, we've done this around the holidays. We order things in and we wrap them and we usually had a handful of presents maybe under the tree. We, our tradition was to wait until Christmas Eve to load all of the presents under the tree, but there would be a few and you know, but it, you had to wait on that. Faith is not so, faith is available now. There's no waiting till a holiday comes, no waiting for a season to pass. There's nothing like that. It's now faith that's a gift, but you have to receive it now. You know, gifts accomplish their blessings when they are received and when they're open. You know, it's fine to see a package, but you don't get to experience the joy of whatever the gift is until you open it. The same is true with faith. You need to walk in your faith. You need to use your faith. You need to accept the free gift of faith that's been given to you, or you'll never receive the benefits of it. Here's the thing that's just conflicting when I think about it. We regularly open things that we are given that aren't ours, that come from the enemy, the devil. For example, we get fearful about a situation. God says he has not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, might, and a sound mind. That's not a gift from God, but yet regularly we find ourselves in fearful places. Why? Because we open the gift that was given to us by the enemy. We have doubt, we have unbelief, we have false identity where somebody has labeled us in a way that isn't how God describes us, but yet we open that package and we walk in the fullness of it, those negative things. So why not do the opposite and say, I rebuke those things that are not of God and I accept the gift that is of him, which is the gift that he's given me to have faith in him, to have complete confidence in him, to trust in him, to have the title deed. I possess it and I can flow in it because he has given it to me. So why don't we return those gifts to the sender that aren't supposed to be ours? This week we got a piece of mail that wasn't to me. It was a bill that was coming and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't addressed to me. Did I open up that bill and pay it? No, of course not. I wrote on the envelope, returned to sender, put my red flag up in the, in the mailbox and said, hey, someone else needs to handle that because that is not my responsibility. That is not for me to own and possess. The same thing is true with the gifts the enemy would try to give to you. But instead, we should say, I, re I reject those, I put them back to the sender, but I should receive that which God has given to me. His gifts are good. It says that if he, if we, 
as human beings know how to give good gifts, how much more does he know how, who created us to give good gifts? One of those good gifts that we need to open is the gift of faith. Faith is a gift that my wife says is like the arm that grabs the grace of God. It's that thing that activates us to be able to move towards accepting and receiving God's grace in our lives. So reach for your gift, receive it. You know, uh, at Christmas time, when, when we sit around and we have the, uh, the blessing of having all of our family there and the 10 grandkids surrounded around us, usually you see the picture of Mimi, my wife, Tracy, sitting in the middle, distributing out gifts. And what are the kids doing? They're all reaching out. I want the gift, I want that gift, I wanna receive it. We should be as hungry for the gift that God's trying to give us of faith, wanting to experience it. We receive the gift of faith by believing. Mark 9, 23 says, Jesus said to him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. I'm asking you today, can you believe? That's the only requirement that you have to receive the gift of faith, is believing that God is for us, not against us that God's word is true, that I can stand in faith on the things that God tells me in his word and his still small voice he whispers through the Holy Spirit. Receive the gift of faith, stand on it, know that it's yours, that you have a title deed. You wouldn't give someone away the title to your home, you would hold on to it because it's yours. You also wouldn't just throw it away. You would say, no, I'm gonna have it, I'm gonna possess it. I'm gonna keep it because it's what I own. Well, you own faith, and I wanna encourage you to walk in that way today. Receiving the gift of faith opens opportunities for you to experience God in a way that currently you're not experiencing Him. Faith is always gonna take you to a higher place. Your faith is always gonna lead you to a path that God's leading, guiding, and directing. Now is the time to receive the gift of faith. We need to understand that all of his promises are yes and amen, the Bible says. It takes faith to obtain those. Now is the time to break free, from, break free from the current situation and accept faith and walk knowing that even though this season may be challenging and difficult, that God is working on our behalf and through faith, we will see great and powerful things happen. Now is the time to activate your faith, which is our third step. Activation of your faith by believing. James 1 6 says this but let him ask in faith with no doubting let's say it again ask in faith with no doubting for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind all things are possible for those who believe it says in mark we don't want to doubt when we think all things are possible if we can get that into our heart we know that God's for us and not against us. We can stand and know and believe and trust that God is working things out for our good. And we don't need to doubt that he's not. We don't need to doubt that he's mad or upset or angry at us. We not, don't need to doubt that he's left us. We need to stand on his word that says he will never leave us, forsake us, that nothing can separate us from his love. And we walk in that place, how? By faith, by activating our faith. Doubt is the result of a lack of trust. We can trust in God. Think of all the things we trust in in this life. Today, we're driving on Interstate 40 to get to this location. We're in the Smoky Mountains today, just outside of Cosby, along the river. It's a beautiful place. But as I was coming here, we're on I-40, where the speed limit is 70 miles an hour. And then we got off the road and we're on a two-lane highway where cars are going back and forth and passing us within 10 feet or so of us. I have faith as I'm driving down the road that the driver on the other side of the road is not gonna cross the line and run into me. I have faith that when I'm driving my car and something happens in front of me and I need to stop, when I hit that six inch pedal that's on the left, that it's gonna stop a machine that's running at 70 miles an hour with just the tap of my foot. I have faith and trust in that. I have trust that if I go to an amusement park and I ride whatever ride, a zip line, a roller coaster, that those things are gonna take care of me. If I can trust in those things, how much more should I be able to trust in God Almighty, the God who loves me, the God who created me, the author and the finisher of our faith? We can trust in God, in Jesus, and in the Holy Spirit. 
think about the things that we trust in the natural life and know that we can trust so much more in God. So now is the time to activate our faith, that your faith would captivate your thoughts, that break you free from your situation and have confidence without doubting. In conclusion, now is the time that we walk by faith. It's the substance that empowers Peter to walk on the water. It's the substance that empowers you to walk and live your life. So we do that by three ways, Not acknowledging it's a free gift, receiving that gift, and activating that faith now. If we can grasp the concept of now faith, we can grasp that the further that it is, that it's my faith to grasp, and we can activate it, I truly believe it will transform our lives. It is about using our faith to gain material things, but more about walking the life that is pleasing to God, as our scripture said, without faith, it's impossible to please him. It's about recalibrating our mind, aligning our thoughts with his thoughts, that we can have faith that a good God is working on our behalf. Now is the time to live our best lives, focus on God, walking by faith, living in purpose. Now is the time that we focus and shift from our situation to the glorious future he has for us. And now is the time that we claim that title deed by faith of what he has for us. Now is the time to walk by faith. Now is the time to walk by flight, by, not by sight. So now is the time to go. And won't you do this? Go and be blessed.